Hello, hello, dear Aquarius. How are you? This is Kathy from Divine Debut, and thank you for joining me here. This is your reading for June. It's a uh, reading um, in relation to general matters and for love. Let's see what comes through. Okay, uh, we're still in retrograde Mercury season at the beginning of the month. And dear Aquarius, very importantly for you, Saturn, which is is one of your ruling planets, um, is going retrograde, is turning de retrograde on the 4th of June. It is Gemini season, so the sun is moving through an air sign, which is trining over to you, so it logically helps you. And where you've had lots of restrictions with... Uh, Saturn going retrograde for a few months moving forward it'll be time to take take a breath looks like your cards are just coming out they're just being thrown out okay so this uh, reading will be extended if this is your story you can get the link beneath the video Okay, dear Aquarius, so is there anything else I need to tell you? Okay, it's for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and North Node in Aquarius. Okay, I know that you have been through a lot, dear Aquarius. It looks like um, maybe some of the uh, troubles could be, could be coming to an end. You've got a couple of nines here. Let's see, the focal point is the Emperor. Let's see what else comes through for Aquarius, dear spirit, in June. Nine of Cups, Knight of Pentacles, the Emperor, which would be Aries. Could be Aries, could be any other sign. Okay, we've got lots of uh, sleepless nights and anxiety here pertaining to a wish fulfillment, something that you're stuck on. There's no movement. There's only planning and, I mean, we could see here that the Knight of Pentacles, which is Earth, okay, it's all about strategizing and looking towards the future. It's something that is handed, offered, uh, moving towards the future. Oh, there's a bit of a hang up, bit of a hold up with the hanging man. This is releasing control, I think. Sort of like letting go and releasing control, releasing fears, doing what it is that you love. Possibly your securities are challenged. Okay, and of course we know that Saturn can be restrictive going through your sign. Okay, so you're at a juncture, you're needing to make a decision, an important decision pertaining to the future. For some reason, um, your ships took longer than necessary. We see here there's so much worry in the past and waiting on something that you desire, something that you've you hope to create. And there's a dilemma about it taking too long. I don't know, you may also have money matters where money is concerned, your finances. Okay, so it's not too bad. Here we've got the Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is you're looking at what you've invested yourself in. Where have you been putting in the effort? Now what? I feel as though you're saying, now what? What do I do now? If this is about practical matters, okay? Practical matters, long-term, anything long-term, of course, it relates to your securities, also to a home, to your stability. Here we have the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Pentacles turns into the Knight of Cups, which is Scorpio energy. I don't know if um, you could also be um, where love is concerned. You're sort of at a juncture. What do I do? Some of you may, be, uh, may have dealt with an earth sign in the past. You could be between an earth sign and another water sign. Could be a Scorpio, could be a Virgo. Virgo is from the past. Scorpio, 
I suppose it could be Pisces as well, um, could relate to the future where over here we see that you are like closing up a cycle, you've surrendered, you've surrendered and sort of taking charge of your own life, but you're at a dilemma. What do I do? Some of you are parents, you've got children as well. But you've, you're waiting on your return, on your sacrifices and whatever you've put effort into. You've got a choice where love is concerned with the lovers. We've got Gemini here, dear Aquarius. I feel like your choice, your dilemma is, do I do what makes me happy or what is the right thing to do? Because you could see that the uh, swords, one is pointing to the Nine of Cups and the other one is pointing to something long-term. It could relate to home, to family, to marriage. Let's see what your Karma Dharma is. In the month of June, you've got the Moon. Unknown matters. Let's take one more. Pisces. A lot of Pisces. Some of you may be on the cusp with Pisces as well. You may have planets in Pisces. The High Priestess can many times be a secretive love connection, a third person, or you're just awakening. You're awakening to spirit. Some of you may be seeking guidance, help from an astrologer, from a tarot reading, or you're awakening to spirit, to your to your ability to connect. I mean, this is great psychic, um, I was going to say apology, great psychic powers, ability. And it can be lots of secrets pertaining to your home, anything to do with the mother, the moon is fears, you can speak to the subconscious. Maybe you, you, you're feeling something in your gut and you don't know if that is what is true. The High Priestess many times is a key. You're looking for some sort of a solution or a resolution. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to take the Astrology reading cards. What's beneath here? The Nine of Pentacles. Someone that's very independent. There is the Ace of Pentacles. So I don't know if you were... If you were in a relationship with someone that's very independent here. Nine of Pentacles is the singular single person and she's sitting on the ace of pentacles it's like she's been offered a new beginning i don't feel that this is you i feel that this is the other person you're dealing with page of cups pisces again small offer sometimes not good enough three of swords yep yeah. Not surprising at all. And beneath that is Scorpio, the death card. Dear, uh, I was going to say Aries. Dear Aquarius. We've just had a lunar eclipse, which is, you know, mid-May. A lunar eclipse, a full moon in Scorpio. Scorpio squares you. Scorpio challenges you to put an end and to free yourself from this sacrifice, from this holding on and waiting. Um, we, we know that the knights, knights, these are the slow knights, uh, earth and water, right? Very feminine, very uh, yin energy. More recessive, not not what's going on now. We've got we've got Jupiter and Mars in Aries. Jupiter and Mars in Aries, which is all about a new cycle, starting something new, having the courage to move forward, like starting a brand new life, starting over. Now, we are in Gemini season as I'm doing this for you. And the lovers, Gemini is difficult in making decisions. Gemini is also, uh, it's like the twins, like 
bouncing off of each other. So the twins is like a mirroring image. So maybe it's what you're feeling now. It could be the, the important person in your life is feeling the same thing. Yeah, it's all about investments. You see, Vesta. Vesta is the sacred flame. The flame of the home, let's say, the goddess within. Your sacred spiritual center and quiet dignity. Vesta is where have you been invested? Is that flame still burning? Is the light still on? Is there the passion, the desire to keep investing in something? This is the sacred half. So we see that with the seven of pentacles here, dear uh, Aquarius. We see it with the seven of pentacles that you are looking at what's been going on for you. We will take more, uh, a few more tarot. We're, we're going to take the love, the psychic tarot of the heart. Let's see what, what the divine, what the wisdom of the oracle wants you to know. What is your advice in the month of June? For Aquarius, dear spirit, Aquarius. You know, with the Emperor in this deck, he seems quite angry, um, aggressive, quite temperamental and short, short-circuited. And I do feel, I mean, the Emperor could be, he's a number four, so he speaks to your stability at home or your emotional stability, your financial um the emperor is usually someone who's in control now i'm not reading reversals with the uh two of swords next to you because i feel that this is you um there is a dilemma so it's like you're sort of you've lost control and you should let go of control that's what the hanging man says and just wait and see what happens let spirit show you let your higher self show you we have peace and it was in the reverse. Logically, I'm not reading reversed cards, but we need to uh, take it into account that you're not in peace. There's a lot of anxiety and stress around you. Now we see the, uh, we see the uh, pigeon, the dove holding um, an olive tree, which does speak to peace. Right, so it's number 23, which equals a 5, and it came out in the reverse. I will re read the upright as well as the um, reverse message, but I see that your sort of things are up in the air now. There's no peace. There's lots of anxiety, and you're looking for peace. Now, you know, the dove can speak to also harmony and resolution and happiness and everything, but it was in the reverse. Let's see what's going on in love. And we know that the moon is a lot of uh, fears and anxiety and fearing the worst, right? Being able to make sense of things. There is some sort of a mystery going on for you. I think I spoke of a mystery with... Uh, Capricorn as well so hmm let's see for Aquarius what's going on in love trust we've got the full card helpless and hopeless that's the eight of swords and you've got clarity of belief the ace of swords nine swords again there's something that's holding you back. You're ready to take a leap of faith, but there's some information, some clarity that you're hoping on before you can start this new journey. Okay, and we see the butterfly. The butterfly is like lightness of being. The Ace of Swords will cut through, will sever through, okay, but it may also cut you as well. It may not be easy. Helpless and hopeless. It's dark thoughts. I mean, Mercury is retrograding as I'm doing this reading and the beginning say the beginning of the month is at those last degrees dear Aquarius those last degrees of Taurus where there's been a lot of action 
and they are signifying the um, they're pointing to I mean Mercury is pressing on the degrees where we had we've had some eclipses especially that full moon in Scorpio let's take one more third eye chakra and again it's saying that you need to trust your intuition okay your your high self will tell you what what it is that you need to do um of course the full card speaks to uranus we're having venus connecting with uranus um at the you know in the first 10 days of the month so this could be sudden shocking revelation surprises um uh, it's an eye opener i mean that's what uranus is uranus is also very spiritual but it can also speak to stress and anxiety so shocking information that will sort of jump start you um and you're going to start to trust your intuition as well so ace of swords it's it's a gift it's clarity it's wisdom it will sort of free you up okay and we've got lover bound so this is the ace of cups that this uh, knight of cups is is carrying so i do see new love for aquarius new situations i would say more than likely and release release the old release the fears release show the world your the real you scorpio is all about fears and uh, this lunar eclipse is saying you need to get out there and you need to release whatever you've been holding what's been holding you back there is Pisces again in the hanging man observe so you've been observing doing a lot of soul searching I would say um, let's take some some more tarot so we've got the lovers at, at the bottom of the deck let's see what the lovers is about We've got the Two of Cups. Incredible. Incredible, dear friends. We, I'm going to take the Nine of Swords right now and see what all that stress and anxiety is about. It's about choices. You've got, like, the Lovers is choices. The Two of Cups, again, is two. Twos can speak to um trying to find your balance you've got another two here so many twos and we are in uh 2022 i mean two 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 year so twos as i've said it's all about partnering up finding your balance or separating so it could be both for you we see that there's the two of wands there and the three of wands here. It's like you're ready to step out on that journey, but sort of you're just eating away at yourself, worrying, putting too much thought into it. I feel like there's like you're wanting to do what it is that you that makes you happy, but something's holding you back. Is it your is it your ethics? Is it your you want to be sure? Let's look at the uh, Emperor. Another four. So holding back, holding back on things pertaining to the home, not feeling safe and secure at home. Uh, money is tight. Money is not easy. Spirit is saying go with the flow, the hanging man. That's what it is. That is what it is. You, you need to release, release the control. And see what happens. Let's take one card on the Two of Swords. Yeah, it could speak to marriage. The Hierophant. It's also your beliefs. It's like inside of you. Like your inner whirlwind. What do I do? Do I go with traditions? Do I break traditions? Do I? Because there's two keys here as well. You've got choices. I feel that at the end of the day, you're going to do what gives you peace. What? You're going to release, you're going to release, and even if you've invested in something for long, 
for quite some time, it could be years, could be months, I feel as though you're starting something new. You're going to be dealing with old matters you're releasing. And I'm going to say that Saturn also turning retrograde is going to sort of give you a breather, release you from, from its grasp, you know, and sort of say, okay, it's time now. You've got some leeway to see what you're going to do. What are you building on? Okay. The Hierophant is Taurus. Taurus is that new moon that we had. We had a solar eclipse. And I'm doing your reading on the new moon in Gemini. So a month ago, we had a solar eclipse. And that solar eclipses change things around you in your environment. Let me just take... Uh, I want to see the Seven of Pentacles. We've got a Queen of Wands here, which could be a Leo. Aquarius, Leo is opposite you, okay? And um, Leo is maybe how you come forth in your relationships. Those of you that are rising Aquarius, obviously Leo is opposite you. So it's time to take action. It's time to move towards your desires. And uh, there's lots of knowledge. There's lots of fire. With Jupiter and Mars in Aries, it's all about the passion, the desire, the courage, and the guts to, to deal. I mean, you're the warrior now. We're all warriors. There's so much fire. There's so much ability. We remember that she's all about magnetism and she's she's got the ability to create. What is it that you desire? You've got the ability to create here. Something new. Remember, she holds the ace of wands. And if we look at the four and the sorry, the three of wands, and she's holding the fourth, some of you could be turning your backs on a marriage or a long term. Or whatever you desire could be coming in you've been waiting we see the ships are here what are you going to do about it we see maybe sort of because the knight of cups is sometimes uncertain he trots in but he is coming in slowly right let's see what's at the bottom of the deck and we've got the hermit virgo energy so some of you have been the hermit or you're seeing the light Now we've got the uh, High Priestess, we've got the Hierophant. Some of you are uh, obviously spiritually awakening or you're connecting to someone that, because we've got Two of Cups here and the uh, the Lovers, there's new love coming in for you. Let's read the Peace card. Someone that is meant to be on your path. 23 is also a 5, so change is also it's a five and uh, the Hierophant is a five. New beginnings, changes in anything to do with marriage commitment. And because we've got so many wands, uh, some of you could also be maybe taking a different turn pertaining to uh, what you're investing yourself in. So anything to do with work and investments. What you're, what you're creating. Let's see, 23. Freedom from attachment is the peace card. So some of you have kept yourself prison, in prison, even though there hasn't been happiness here. And radical acceptance. Radical is the word of Uranus, which rules you. And Venus is going to touch on Uranus in Taurus. So where there's been no value no stability and no security financial you're making changes it doesn't get any better than this a quiet mind a heart fulfilled freedom from want fulfilled freedom from want and the soul satisfaction the way to peace is through radical acceptance everything in your world is exactly as it should be harmony is beautiful enjoy it remember that the peace card came through in the reverse in relationship when two people are in true alignment with one another, they have an innate, innate harmony between them. They are as two perfectly tuned instruments playing together. Sometimes it's impossible to tell who is who. Peace is yours and it is to be savoured. 
prosperity message. This is one of those times when you're capable of clear vision about your work and how you create your prosperity. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. So the opposite would be stop what you've been doing and do something different, dear Aquarius. You're called by a presence to step into your power. Just being is enough for you are in peaceful harmony with spirit and it shows in your work. Now the protection message, which is the uh, card in reverse, says now is the time for calmness and well-being in spite of temporary conditions. Even if there are dissonant notes in the music of your life, all that means is that you must go within and fine tune the extraordinary instrument that you are. Find harmony within yourself and don't look to the outer world to provide certainty. This too shall pass and once again your life will be filled with beautiful music. Okay, dear Aquarius. So I do feel, big, obviously, um, obviously in the uh, season of Leo, in the season of Leo, um, when the sun ingresses into Leo, the sun ingresses into your house of partnerships, whether it's love or business, right, or family. So I do feel that June is sort of like you're trying to uh, catch yourself, you're trying to prepare for a new beginning. There's things that you're still needing to do, but love abounds. It is in front of you. Okay, so that's what I have for you. I will continue this reading and extended with a lot more cards. Oh, oh, dear Aquarius, let me just take three Lenormand, which I usually do in the free YouTube. Just take three, three Lenormand for Aquarius, dear spirit, in the month of June. What shows up for Aquarius? Just so that you have an idea of what's coming up. So you've got the whip, which can speak to uh, conflicts and arguments and objections and just difficulties. But there's a portal that is opening. It is a number 11. We've got the anchor, which can speak to humbling and being anchored or anything to do with your stability, whether it's marriage or a business. There's, there's challenges. There's challenges here. And we've got the fox. So the fox can speak to sneakiness. Some of you may find out about some sort of deception or um, someone who's been sneaky. I mean, this is Pluto and Scorpio. This will lead you to uh, changes, obviously, because the fox is selfishness. Okay, it can speak to self-care or cunning energies. Right, so someone maybe has been a little bit deceptive. You did have the moon. Let's take just one more on that fox. Either that or you're making, you're turning something, um, you're changing. So you're becoming more intelligent and uh, doing what you're meant to do to provide for yourself. Right? And you are very intelligent. Okay. So some of you may also feel as though someone stabbed you in the back. You were their friend. You were loyal. They were sneaky. So, um, yeah, the dog and the fox, which are also in the moon. Let's continue this. We've got the snake here. We'll continue it. So thank you for joining me here. Love and light. Thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing. And I'm wishing you well for the month of June. The snake does speak to third parties. It does speak to desires. It speaks also, um, it's moon and cancer. So there can be a uh, craving to connect with someone in a sexual way, dear friends. And uh, it can be, can be intimacy, can be third parties, all right? Um, but it can also speak to wisdom. So you are all about wisdom. It looks like your life is um, changing greatly. And I'm wishing you well with the changes that you are going through. All right, love and light. Talk to you soon, dear Aquarius. Ta-da, and thank you so much.